Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CCSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to cloud development in Domain 4 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the first of seven videos for Domain 4. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are a bite-sized part of our complete CCSP masterclass. There are a variety of benefits that come with developing applications in the cloud. For example, you can simply sign up to a platform as a service provider and be ready to start coding within minutes with no need to spend forever setting up and managing your infrastructure. However, there are also a number of pitfalls that come with the cloud, including often immense complexity and new or exacerbated risks. So in this mind map, we're gonna walk through some of the common pitfalls, opportunities, and challenges. We're gonna start with a couple of lists that are important to know about and reference. These are lists that can help you develop more secure applications. OWASP is the Open Worldwide Application Security Project, an organization that works to improve software security. One of its projects is the Web Application Top 10, which is a list of the most common web application vulnerabilities that you need to watch out for. The most common vulnerabilities include broken access control, cryptographic failures, and various types of injection, like SQL injection. This is a very useful list. If you're building a web-based application, you'd better make sure it's not vulnerable to the 10 most common vulnerabilities in the world. Another handy list that you should know about is the CWE Top 25 Most Dangerous Software Errors, which includes things like out-of-bounds write, cross-site scripting, and OS command injection. It's exactly the same idea. When developing an application, ensure it doesn't have any of the top 25 vulnerabilities from the list. CWE, by the way, stands for Common Weakness Enumeration. When developing cloud applications, there are a range of pitfalls that you need to watch out for. These include your on-premise systems and development practices may not transfer very well to the cloud. What may have worked well on-premise may not in the cloud. The cloud has inherently different risks and different controls must be employed to mitigate the risks. In other words, you often need to employ different techniques when developing systems in the cloud, employ different types or focus on different security controls. Developing applications in the cloud requires new knowledge and skills if you want to be able to effectively manage and secure your systems. Cloud also comes with a variety of new risks, including things like compliance challenges, for example, it can be easy to store your data in a location that violates your regulatory requirements. Another big change is that cloud apps are exposed to the internet, usually, meaning that you can't bury them deep in your internal network with layer upon layer of security controls guarding them. This level of exposure means that you really need to take care regarding which security mechanisms you implement and how you'll go about it. You often want to employ strategies like zero trust when building systems in the cloud. Cloud development often involves a high level of integration from a variety of vendors. For example, you could be using an identity and access service from one provider, a database service from another provider, and so on. When your cloud software is composed of so many different parts from so many different vendors, it can be a challenge to integrate them all and keep them functioning appropriately and sufficiently secured. Legacy applications can be very difficult to move to the cloud. It's not uncommon to see lower availability if you migrate the systems to a cloud provider than if you kept it on-premise. I'll, I'll talk about that later. And many legacy systems may not happily run in the cloud or at all. Multi-tenancy. Public cloud services are multi-tenant by nature, which means that many cloud customers are using the same underlying physical in hardware and infrastructure. They are isolated logically, but there's a chance that this can be implemented poorly, allowing customers to access the data of one another. This is why you shouldn't use public cloud for highly sensitive data and applications. You need to consider the multi-tenancy nature of the public cloud and ensure you have appropriately identified and mitigated the risks. Now, I don't want to remotely suggest that developing applications in the cloud is all doom and gloom. The cloud brings a range of opportunities, including higher baseline security. The major cloud providers are huge companies with big teams of highly skilled security professionals. Because of their scale and range of expertise, it's much easier for them to provide a higher baseline of security than the average small or medium enterprise. You can take control of this or you can take advantage of this higher baseline of security when you build an application in the cloud. Responsiveness. 
The cloud brings us a variety of ways that can make our apps more responsive, including rapid elasticity and automatic scaling. It can be relatively easy to make a highly responsible and scalable application in the cloud. Isolated environments. Virtual infrastructure can be deployed cheaply and relatively easily, making it much simpler to create isolated environments in the cloud. Through things like micro segmentation and similar techniques, we can isolate our environments, network segments, instances, storage, etc., at a very granular level with relative ease, providing a high degree of security. Microservices architecture. In contrast to traditional monolithic architectures, microservices allow us to break up our apps into smaller and independent modular parts. This can make it easier to change, make changes without breaking the entire app. It can also make it easier to create more resilient and scalable applications at the cost, of course, of some added complexity. Elasticity. The rapid elasticity of cloud services means that they can easily handle demand spikes and scale alongside the needs of your business. DevOps is an approach that involves integrating software development with operations. This allows us to iterate on re and release new software at a much quicker pace. When we bring security into the picture, we call it DevSecOps or SecDevOps. It can potentially be easier to employ DevSecOps processes in the cloud. Unified Management Interface. Clouds are controlled by the management plane, which is a unified management interface. You can control almost every aspect of the cloud through the management plane, which can give you a single pane of glass view into all of your infrastructure and make management much easier. However, the immense power and level of access that management plane provide also makes it a huge risk, so it must be very carefully secured. Ah, immutable infrastructure. Immutable infrastructure is infrastructure that can't be changed. On the one hand, this makes it very secure and very consistent, but it also means that you need to, if you need to update it, you must completely replace it with a new image that includes the desired changes. So immutable infrastructure has many benefits, but it also means you must completely change how you manage your infrastructure. All right, now on to a few more specific development challenges that we need to talk about here. Limited logging visibility. If you're developing or say a pass or an infrastructure is service, you won't have as much control over the underlying infrastructure compared to developing on top of your own hardware in your own environment. This limits where you can log. So you may not have the kind of visibility into your infrastructure that you desire. Increased application scope. One of the downsides of the management planes comes with it having so much control of the environment, as I, as I mentioned earlier. If an attacker managed to compromise the management plane, it's pretty much game over for your application. Changing threat models. Cloud services face different threats to on-premises systems. If you're moving to the cloud, as I mentioned at the intro of this, you need to understand the new threats, the new risks that are in the cloud that may be introduced and make sure you're appropriately mitigating them. And finally, reduce transparency. When you use a cloud service, you won't necessarily have full visibility into what's under the hood of the provider. Transparency is particularly low for software as a service, you're, right? You're just renting access to an application. But it does improve as you move down the spectrum to platform as a service and then on to infrastructure as a service. You need to understand what you may no longer have visibility into when you move to the cloud and ensure you're comfortable or have appropriate mitigating controls in place for this reduced transparency. All right, there you go. That's an overview of cloud development within Domain 4, covering the most critical concepts you need to know for the exam.